Hi, I'm Carol Andrews for another episode of Southwest TV News. Here are some of the stories coming up on today's show. Clean, safe drinking water is what all communities strive for. And for the last nine years, a major undertaking has been underway to create a reliable, potable water source for the residents of the Kyle area. The latest numbers are in, and oil production in Saskatchewan hit a new record in 2012, according to the stats released by the Ministry of the Economy. It's been a busy winter season at Swift Current's outdoor rinks, thanks to optimum ice conditions. Thanks for joining us here today. Following several years of hard work behind the scenes, a more reliable water source is on the horizon for residents of Kyle and area. Clean, safe drinking water is what all communities strive for. And for the last nine years, a major undertaking has been underway to create a reliable, potable water source for the residents of the Kyle area. Now, thanks to the dedicated efforts of the community members from Kyle, Elrose, and the surrounding RMs of Monet and Lacadinia, and the provincial government representing the neighboring Saskatchewan Landing Park, a new utility will be in place by the fall. The $45 million project, known as the Saskatchewan Landing Regional Water Pipeline, will benefit some 100 rural customers, along with the residents of the town of Kyle and Elrose, and patrons of the Saskatchewan Landing Park. A welcome improvement overall for the town of Kyle. In the, in the Kyle area, there's almost no one on the farms that can access good water by drilling a well. Uh, they're having to haul water. You know, they can have dams and dugouts and and so on, but uh, not a good source of water. The, uh, the town of Kyle has a good source of water, the, uh, this is an opportunity to get in on uh, a treatment plant. The water at Kyle has not been treated in the past. And there's a significant amount of manganese in the water, about eight times the recommended level. It also has arsenic, which is getting close to what the allowable limit is. Now, with the two new water treatment plants set for construction in Kyle and Elrose this spring, the benefits will eventually trickle down to the approximate 50 cabin owners and thousands of campers at the Saskatchewan Landing. A positive scenario for all project partners. It's a bonus because uh, we get some safe, clean water supply, potable water for our park users, and it's a reliable source. So we, we hope that uh, we can uh, provide good water supply for the park. Similar water projects involving Saskatchewan parks and neighboring communities have already transpired with a new water utility in conjunction with Blackstrap Provincial Park and the town of Dundurn. In the coming weeks, construction will commence on the new water treatment plants near Elrose and Kyle, with those communities and partnering RMs benefiting from the new water pipeline by the fall. Meanwhile, Saskatchewan Landing patrons will enjoy the new potable water system in 2014, a project which will ensure quality, safe water for years to come. The overall project for the Saskatchewan Landing Regional Water Pipeline became a reality through a series of grants and investment by the participating communities and RMs, the province of Saskatchewan and the Government of Canada. Being able to tell your story has become a critical issue for most businesses, but there are many choices to consider. The bottom line is, you need to be able to connect with your customers. And nothing works better than video. Why do I say that? Take a look at this. Our company helps tell your story and provides you with a solution on how to market your business. Because making a great video is only half the equation. You have to know how to use it. We have done a major work. 2012 was a banner year for oil production in Saskatchewan, creating jobs and benefiting local communities. The latest numbers are in, and oil production in Saskatchewan hit a new record in 2012 according to the stats released by the Ministry of the Economy. Crude oil production in the province resulted in 172.9 million barrels in 2012, an increase of over 7% from the previous record 
of 161 million set in 2008, which included oil production of 473,600 barrels per day, with overall combined oil and gas sales at approximately $12.5 billion. A positive trend which the Saskatchewan Minister of Energy and Resources hopes will continue through 2013. Industry overall and in all of Canada recognizes there are challenges around pipeline capacity and what that means to to the bottom lines of both industry and uh, to the government as well. So I think that that's an issue that will be addressed from many different fronts. Industry today is using rail a lot more heavily to to get their products out and I know that that many pipeline projects are are moving forward as well and that's something our government has certainly been pushing from from our point as well. Our Premier has uh, put together a letter with a group of American governors and uh, himself to President Obama because uh, we believe that uh, the Keystone XL is a project that should and needs to go forward. And for communities like Shonovan, the economic benefits have increased over the years from the oil and gas sector in the region, creating jobs and new investment in the town. You know, we have had uh, some amazing uh, things happen, from, you know, with the people that have moved to our community. The real entrepreneurial spirit in this community right now and uh, seeing a lot of growth, a lot of new businesses. And, uh, you know, that's as a result of, uh, you know, the strong uh, provincial economy, but certainly the, uh, you know, the impact that the oil industry has had on our, uh, our community in the southwest. The oil and gas sector plays a key role in the Saskatchewan economy while creating approximately 34,000 jobs annually. Local residents have been out taking advantage of the many outdoor rinks across the city this winter season, thanks to the weather and the overall rink conditions. Here in Swift Current, there are a number of different ways to enjoy the great outdoors. But a popular destination this winter has been the use of the outdoor skating rinks. Skaters and hockey players are coming out in record numbers this winter and filling the five outdoor rinks that surround our community. A reason for the increase in numbers could be the mild winter last year. And Sharon Waldy of the Outdoor Hockey League has noticed a big difference in ice conditions this winter. Much better than last year. Last year we played inside at the Palliser Pavilion. We played ball hockey half the time because there was no ice. But no, the ice has been very good this year. To this date, there have been a combined total of over 18,000 skaters that have used the outdoor rinks. And according to the Parks and Recreation Department, if these numbers continue, it could potentially be the highest numbers in the last 24 years. But have you ever wondered how the ice is created or who maintains it? Meet Doug Westergaard, one of several rink supervisors around the city who wakes up early in the morning in order to clear off and flood over 20,000 square feet of ice surface. Westergaard discusses the ideal conditions that are needed for creating quality ice. About minus five is about the minimum that we'd want to flood because you're putting uh, warmer water on colder ice and uh, it'll draw the heat out and it takes it longer to firm up. So it seems to be a good temperature to make your round on your perimeter flood and uh, let it all uh, uh, work into itself and then do the rest of the flooding and by the time I come back around again I could start my fan flood on that and this is already firmed up on this side so about those kind of temperatures is what I'm looking for and and uh, no snow that that makes a big difference because that's one thing we can't do is uh, can't flood into that because it just makes it uh, really uh, just like sandpaper. Swift Current has certainly got its fair share of snow this winter. We've seen 36 days that have had a measurable snowfall, accumulating over 77 centimeters since November. Working with Mother Nature is something Westergaard has had to learn over the years and comments on how snowfall has affected his role. We've had snow uh, basically in the last 14 days from what I've noticed anyway. I think there's been only two days where we haven't had uh, any snow at all. We're sitting at a centimeter, two centimeters, four centimeters. And any time we get something like that, it takes so much more time to get the ice cleared off because we have to move that from side to side, pile it all down the sides, and then uh, throw that all over. And basically by the time we're done this rink here, uh, that's just about our morning gone. With only four weeks left in the season, don't miss your chance to go out and enjoy the outdoor rinks. For Southwest TV News, I'm Scott Armstrong.
Well, this brings to a close another episode of Southwest TV News, reporting the stories that matter to you. We always welcome your news tips. You can always reach us here by phone at our studio or by email to contact us at southwesttvnews.com. Also, be sure to join us daily online for the latest news from across Southwest Saskatchewan and so much more at mylocaltv.ca. And be sure to follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thanks for joining us here today. I'm Carol Andrews.